It's about that time. Savings, savings. What's happening in your city? Savings, savings. Savings, savings. You got love for your city? Savings, savings. All right, welcome back. Welcome back to City Views. And it's just a woman ladies' night tonight. It's ladies' night. We don't have any of the gentlemen here with us. Unfortunately, Jacques, not unfortunately, but fortunately, Jacques is doing the early voting um, down downtown. So he cannot be here. And Kareem is attending the Dear uh, Taco Joe's funeral um, tonight. Oh, wow. So you know, I'm glad that that we were able to split our team up to represent all these different um, areas and things that we have to do. But um, right now, I'm going to introduce you. This is Isabella. Hi. One of our co-hosts. I am Chris, and we have a special guest here with us tonight. And this is Charlene Donahue. I said it correctly <laughs> well this time. Well Donahue. Yeah. And Charlene is a playwright and educator. We're going to talk to Charlene later on in the show all about um, the Playwright Festival, which happened a couple of weeks ago, and to everything that she's up to, you know, moving forward for the rest of the year. Sure. But um, right now, we're going to go into our sponsors. Let's thank our sponsors. All right. So our sponsors for this evening are the Todd Insurance Agency, located at 1155 East Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut. Better for protection for better value. You can reach them at 860-496-7771. Mel Brickman in Health Markets, 16 McDermott Avenue, Suite 1, Torrington C. You better call better Mel. Call Mel. <laughs> and you can reach them at 860-307-1128. The Chamber of Commerce at 59 Field Street, Suite 120 in Torrington. And the Chamber is the place to be. And if you have any questions for them, always feel free to call at 860-482-6586. Dr. Michael Curry who is our pediatric care for over 50 years here in Torrington. They're located at 30 Peck Road, Suite 2105, Torrington, Connecticut. And you can reach them at 860-482-8177. T-Town shout-out sponsors are sponsored by the Torrington Downtown Partners, growing downtown Torrington one business at a time. All right. Thank you so much for reading those sponsors. Now, we have an exciting show. There's so much coming up in the next couple of weeks. I mean, aside from voting and just a lot of different events, I, be I believe there's Halloween events coming up. Yes, there Because Halloween is, is that next week? It the is. The Halloween weekend is next yeah, weekend. No, yes. Yeah. Goodness. Mm -hmm. October flew by. I can't keep track of the days anymore. No. It, <laughs> It really oh, just, <laughs> yeah. you the know, whole year flew by, didn't the whole year it really flew did. By? It really, summer flew by, right. just everything just, it's just flying by. And I think, and you know, once you have kids, it flies by even faster. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, where did the time go? <laughs> but, um, the, you know, a couple of things, there's one event that I want to talk to you guys about, and this is actually my own event. And this is Coco's Caribbean dance and headpiece making workshop this event is going to be november 2nd at Wait. dance and beyond dance studio which is within it's inside the the pinewoods racket club mm -hmm. so that's 104 yeah. pinewoods road and i'm gonna have my dancers do a nice carnival dance so you're gonna see beads headpieces the custom is gonna be amazing after the carnival dance we're also gonna the dancers are gonna teach um you know the the participants a few dance steps 
That's so, so fun. Yeah, they're going to learn some carnival dance I stuff. So, you know, when they go on the cruise or, or <laughs> oh, even yeah. just take a vacation with their family. Or clean gonna... the house, you know? Like, come on. I <laughs> Walk around, dance. clean the house, and do some carnival dance That's steps. That's it. We're going to dance. <laughs> um, I'm also going to read my carnival book, which um, is called Coco's Carnival Connection. It's a children's book. And then right after that, each person is going to get to design their own carnival headpiece, which they that. get to take with them wow. home. So yeah, it's going to be amazing. a great, great event. It's from 11 to that's 12. Great. Tickets are $20 per person, and um, you can either give me a call at 860-325-0791, or you can um, visit Dance and Beyond's uh, Facebook page and register that way. Um, but it's going to be a great event. That sounds it's like gonna such fun. It's going to be such a nice event. So See the dancing, learn the dancing. Learn that's right. I mean, make a headpiece. That's a full night. It, yeah, that's it is. Fun. It's going to be from 11 a.m. till 12 12 p.m. Um, okay. Hopefully we can fit it all in, but you know, if we have to go longer, we can. We certainly it's like can. A, it's like a, it's a good, um, you know, get the girlfriends together, and I'll go and hang out for yeah. an hour or so, and yeah, yeah, bring idea. the kids. Fantastic. Boys are bring welcome because I do have um, boys headpieces as well. I know, you know, people look at it and they're like, oh, that looks sharp. like it's only for girls. It's not. It's also That's for the great. boys, so the boys can come on down and make a headpiece for themselves as well. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did this program at Torrington Library oh, um, yeah. over the summer. I also did this program at um, Kids Play right. last year, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice. last year. I, I did this program um, with New Opportunities Youth, the Good. Latina um, girls, which oh, great. great group of girls. I teach them Caribbean dance, and they, they're just, they're just a fun to be around, fun Very group of nice. girls. Yeah, yeah, so... It's a great program, and I'm hoping to just do this program more and more, you know, from city to city, um, even through the rec department as well. That would so, be great. yeah, yeah, maybe I can even do it at the one or one of these. Days. <gasps> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there are. I love that you did it at the library. I worked at the library for three and a half years. Oh, really? I love Torrington Library. Okay. Great group of of people who work there. Wonderful staff. Wonderful yeah. patrons who come in. And uh, this definitely sounds like something up the alley of where everybody would enjoy it, have a good time, find something new, and learn, too. And like learn. learning about the heritage and the culture. That's I, right. I just, learning that's about important. different cultures is important. I, I think especially in these times, like, where, you know, I think for so many years, because, due to COVID, we were so closed off. And once every the floodgates opened back, I don't think everyone reconnected. Mm -hmm. True. You know? Mm -hmm. And so I think it starts with just learning about different cultures, understanding different cultures, accepting mm -hmm. different cultures. Agreed. And and what better way than through dance and the arts, right? Right, right. I, you know, it, the mission, right? It yeah. Is, it's bringing the community together through music and arts. Yeah, and that's I right. I just think that's brilliant. And that is what we should be doing. I mean, the arts are important. We the arts you are don't have a vital. society without an art. No, you do not. You know, I did see an article the other day that um, someone asked, what, like, oh, did we miss a call? I'm not sure. Don't think we did. But um, what does the art do for the economic, um, you know, sector? And, and I read that, and, and the answer was just so profound, came from another artist, and was like, the arts is vital to any sector, um, you know, economically, just for us to survive as, as human beings, as a culture, like, we need the arts. You know, to be able to just express ourselves, mm -hmm. it's, it's, the, it's the biggest way and the easiest way, easiest form of expression. Yeah. And if you arts. start, you know, you look at children and you start them at young ages and they can be sometimes their most expressive selves mm -hmm. when you start them in the arts. And to carry that through, as you said, I wouldn't know anything about, you know, Trinidadian dance or making headpieces or anything, but... This is, a, this is an artistic program that, that allows for everybody to learn about this. That's right. And, that's right. Yeah, I think and, it's and making your own headpiece is also, it's you expressing yourself because I'm not telling you what to make. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's you choose your feathers, you choose your beads, and now you're, this is self-expression. Mm -hmm. so, so you're allowing kids to express themselves. And then there's a, a, a uniformity to it because you're seeing everyone come together together. 
-hmm. and to create headpieces. That's just community. amazing. Even yeah. in that yes. moment, they're forming a community. Yes, There's a lot of enrichment. Moment. Yeah. And I think that the other big piece of it is when you're looking in art and seeing the things that it's producing, that's how we know everything about ancient societies. And we learned it all through art mm -hmm. and interpreting what that art could mean for the time of, of politics. Their money is even considered art. And so I think definitely has a great impact and very broad impact on every scope of life. So definitely. it's nice to expose you know, young to old of every Absolutely. culture. And, and that exposure, you know, sometimes lead people down that path. Mm -hmm. You know, all of a sudden, it's like, sometimes people are like, I know something's missing. I don't know what it is. And you expose them to one thing and they're like, that's what it is. That's what, that's, what yep. that's the path I was meant to take. This is what I was meant to do. And, and you know, any form of arts, whether it's music, dancing, acting, um, aside from it being self-expression, it also helps your brain like develop True. in so many more ways. Like you, you learn to be disciplined, you learn to memorize, like you learn so much mm -hmm. with the arts that it, it helps every facet of life. I think it's also a, a point of self-discovery and knowing, you knowing yourself, being, being free enough, giving yourself permission to say, I can express myself any way I want with art, right? I can be a writer, I can be a dancer, I can be a singer, I can be a sculptor, I can be a graphic artist, I can be an actor, I can... There's so many ways that everyone can express themselves. It's a vast, it's a vast spectrum. And art is, it's, it's breath. Yeah. It's breath. <laughs> it really it is. is, it really is. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't go wrong with any type, parts of the arts. Um, now, I believe we are expecting Jacques to call in. Jacques is going to call us from, um, I, I believe he's down at, at, at City Hall. Mm -hmm. um, he was quite busy yesterday with early voting registration. Um, they, they, they had a lot of people yesterday, Good. he said. They were so busy. They did not expect the number of people to show up um, and, you know, he said a lot of people showed up yesterday and they're expecting the same thing again today. So that's got to vote. Yeah. Got to vote. vote. It's very it's important. Very important. Very important to vote. Um, now, you know what I'd like to know, and I, I'm sure we're going to make sure we have this for um, everyone out there for, um, you know, all the different areas, depending on where you live in town, that you can go and vote. Mm -hmm. I know my, my area is the middle school. Okay. Um, I'm not sure, was the high school ever used as, as a voting? I think it was mainly the middle school in that area. I, I go down to the, um, to the community center, to downtown, to Coe Park. I'm okay. at Coe Park. But I don't know if the high school might have been many years ago. But I remember, like, my parents are up your end of town, yeah. so they're also the middle school. And, you know, I know, there's probably four or five. I think East School used to be used, but East School isn't isn't active as isn't a school, a school anymore. anymore. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so what we'll do <laughs> next week is we'll make sure we have all the voting right. locations and, right. and the breakdown of, you know, where you live, mm -hmm. where your voting station would be. So I think that's important that everyone should know that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And they're easy enough. I mean, you know, the Co Park is not a big parking area, but if you get in and out, if you're mindful of everybody else, everybody can mm -hmm. get in. Yeah. Now, it's, so do they use, they're using the Civic? Center yes, the civic building. Center. Yes, okay. the civic center building. I yep. just found out that's what it was called today. Yes, yeah, civic center. <laughs> I said community center. It's a civic center. You're right. It's I just found that out center. today. I, I went down there to, um, you know, leave some flyers for my program. And um, she said, you know, where would you like it to be held? Would you like, if you, we were to do one, would it be at the civic center? I'm like, where's the civic center? I, <laughs> I didn't know Torrington had a civic it's center. It's actually a nice spot for that type of thing. Yeah. It's, it's. It, you could spread out. It's large enough people. You can get a lot of good number of people in there to do some dancing. Mm -hmm. Very nice. It's a nice yeah. open space. Yeah, it's a nice open space. Yeah. So, yeah, um, the Civic Center. Yeah, there you go. Let's That's do that. Where, yeah, <laughs> hopefully. All right. So, I don't see Jacques calling in as yet. So, we're going to go ahead and start speaking with you, Charlene. I'm just going to first read just briefly some of um, your background. Okay. So, Charlene Donahue is a playwright playwright, producer, and educator. 
Warner International Playwrights Festival. She also um, teaches at the University of Nebraska Omaha Theater, cinema and uh, cinema and, and what? I teach in the uh, I teach uh, in the dis- I got cut off. That's <laughs> okay. In the theater department, I teach cinema and theater, okay. and then I teach in the MFA in creative writing. I teach playwriting, screenwriting, and fiction writing. Oh wow! So yes, it's a great love it. It's a great, great, great place to work. Great students, students that are breathtakingly talented and I work with fellow professors who are just amazing yeah very nice and and you're also an award-winning educator and playwright with plays produced and or awarded from New York City to Los Angeles in Canada Great Britain Australia Hanson oh. Publishing Group um, let's see best American short plays uh, so Best 10-minute plays. I mean, this list goes <laughs> on and on. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> on Hanson and on. Handsome Publishers, I have a book of plays out called Bones of Home and other oh. plays. Bones of Home is the title of one of the plays. And John Hanson, Handsome Publishing out of uh, New Jersey is my publisher. I just saw him a couple weeks ago. Really? He's great, yeah. yeah. Oh, very, very nice, very nice. Now, I had the opportunity of interviewing you at the, the 13th did. annual International Playwright Festival, which okay. was um, October 11th and 12th, I believe. Yes, we usually have um, the second weekend of, of, of October, October. Correct. down at the Warner Theater. And there were five plays each night. Correct. Um, and we we were down there the Friday night, mm-hmm. and we saw some wonderful plays. <laughs> and it so happens that, you know, as I'm standing there interviewing you, I spoke to you and, and told you the plays that stood out to me mm-hmm. last year, and one of them happened to be... Yours. One of my plays. <laughs> yeah, one of yes, your plays. Yes. Can you tell us about that play? So that particular one um, is called Freak Out. And Freak Out is a, a part of an, of an evening of theater uh, made up of six different, what, I, what we call playlets. So they're shorter plays that make a whole evening of theater. It follows uh, 4 a.m. Friends is the overall name that follows three friends from age 13 to age 63. And Freak Out, which is the one you saw, is a look at these three friends right around age 50 and starting to deal um, with some ageism in society (laughs) and what that looks like. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But it's finding their way back to each other. And 4 a.m. Friends, that full evening, um, is going to have a reading at the Waterbury Palace in January. And um, you guys have the exclusive to know that it will also be produced fully at Goshen Players. In wow. March. Yeah. yeah, so. Wonderful. It is, um, writers, you know, there's, write, write, write your heart, write, write what you want to write, um, write things that are entertaining, but also looking at something like ageism or the first in that series of plays, um, White Bra with a Pink Bow, looks at kind of the effects on war on children and, mm-hmm. and longing for parents who are, who are serving. Um, so without preaching, I think it's the, it is a, a delicate, wonderful balance that writers do to sort of get a message but also entertain. And um, Freak Out Looking at Ageism was something that was uh, in the forefront of my mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nothing I've actually, I don't think, personally experienced but i i've seen it and i know it's out there and uh, yeah it's so that one was one of mine yeah and the other one was it was the one where the blood bank the blood bank right yeah the blood bank and that was that was an amazing eye-opening story that you know you you look at um racism and you don't realize how deep (laughs) it extended like I don't think in my head I ever thought that it, it extended as far as blood, like that they wouldn't accept black blood. Like blood is blood, you blood would think, blood. right? Mm-hmm. Blood is blood. blood. is your blood type. Um, as long as it's your blood type, exactly. Blood is blood. But yeah, it extended that far. Mm-hmm. And, and that was just like jaw dropping to yeah. me to even find that out. I was like blown away. Yeah. And that's, by that. I think that's also the power of theater, right? We, it is, is a tool that can educate as well. I have a, a, a full length that hopefully will be going up in Washington, D.C. in the next year um, called The Quadroon and the Dove, and it looks at the New Orleans Society. I, I mm. New Orleans was the second home for many years, and uh, the life of a quadroon mistress there in, in New Orleans. They were basically mistresses of, of the wealthy uh, Creole men um, who it was an accepted uh, practice to have these women 
sort of as they called they were called plasage. Mm. Um, but it is something that looks at um, how society treats people even that it's a historical play 1841 free women of color but were they really free were right. they like right. were, they weren't able to leave these men or they would be destitute so what is that line of of freedom versus the best in life so yeah it's it is um that sounds like a, a great play. I'd love mm -hmm. to see that. Where, and where is that going to be? Well, if all goes well, so I have a wonderful director called Ricky Howie Lacewell. She's a Washington, D.C. director. We sort of fangirl on each other. I love her work. She loves mm -hmm. mine. Um, so it is one of those uh, wonderful things that if all goes well, 2025, um, she is in the middle of a directing frenzy. She's doing really great stuff right now. So uh, we're just uh, waiting for the, the in on that. And it's, it's a good... Um, it's also one of those plays that shows mm -hmm. that society. I had a woman come up to me in Boston. We did a reading in Boston. And she came up to me and said, thank you for teaching me a part of my, my heritage that I never knew existed. And they were showing me that. And, yeah, so. Well, we will come back to you. Right now we yeah. have a phone call. So Great. let's take that. Hello, hello, Jacques. Yes. How are you? We were just talking about how busy you've been the last couple of days. <laughs> Tell us more. Well, I mean, the whole early voting experience is seems to be working quite well. Uh, there were some, you know, nationwide um, indications that uh, it might be a, a a very needed tool and resource for people, but here locally, uh, things are. Uh, Things are looking pretty good. We've gotten uh, over 800 people in two days to uh, Fantastic. to participate in early voting. That's that's wonderful. That's that's really good. That speaks to the power of just the importance of voting, and people are making sure the message is getting out there, and people are making sure if they can't vote on the fifth that they they are going to you know yeah. utilize the early early voting. Very important. I have friends in Nebraska who are who are utilizing it, so it is. It's wonderful to have that available. Yes, indeed it is. And uh, I just want to take this opportunity to welcome the ladies to the show. Uh, <laughs> hello, Isabella and uh, Charlene. Thanks, Thank you for uh, sitting in on CT Views tonight. I wish I could be there awesome. with you in person, however. It's a ladies' I, uh, night tonight. Ladies' <laughs> night. I, I, have, I have left you in the more than capable hands of my willing co-host. You have. So, She's uh, fabulous. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, but i got to tell you guys a story, uh, which is just is making this so much more of an experience for me. Um, there was, uh, we got a call today from someone who needed assistance uh, with their voting. So um, in, in that situation, you know, both um, registrars have to go out, um, to, you know, for checks and balances to make sure that, um, you know, the will of the voter is uh, expressly, um, expressly uh, met. So we got there and uh, you know, knocked on the door. He asked him to come in. We, we go in, and he's in a wheelchair. Um, and uh, we had trouble at first communicating with him. Mm -hmm. And what had happened was we had already sent him out two uh, applications for an absentee ballot, but the way the law stated. If you ask for another one, there's a uh, form that you have to fill out so that it's almost like an affidavit. So you're saying you have it, you know, voted um, with that other uh, application. So he had he had none of it. Mm. And, you know, it was like, you know, what are we going to do? And, he, you know, he was like really, you know, forlorn about the situation. And he was having, you know, obviously difficulty communicating. We didn't know why, but um, so we said, well, look, um, let's see what we can do. Um, get you um, another ballot and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just see if we can, you know, make it happen. And the first rule 
uh, for voting that we have for Rich Stars of voter, Voters is making sure that everyone has the opportunity to vote. So, yeah, made some calls, talked to some people. We were able to document the situation, give him another uh, ballot uh, so that he could make his vote. So we went back to the house, and he, he told us, he goes, and, and it was so weird the way it happened because it was like the first time that he like talked like really um, audibly to us. And, you know, he explained to us that he was in a car accident and he had brain damage. Mm. So, and he was just so overjoyed about this because voting was something that he always valued mm. and wanted to do. And in the state and condition that he's in, he just, he, you know, misplaces stuff. He, you know, doesn't remember stuff. Um, and he can't, you know, effectively communicate. But he was crying when we left because he felt like the fact that he was able, and he didn't think that because of everything that happened, he was going to be able to cast his vote. And Fred and I were talking, that's my uh, partner, uh, the other town register on the way back. And it was like, you know, that's, that makes it worth it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And for people in that situation to value the vote to that degree, it just, it, it makes it all worth it. The sacrifices through the centuries that people have made for this right and why it's so uniquely an American treasure that we have. And it shouldn't be denigrated. Um, you know, the system's not perfect and they're always, you know, trying to make it more accurate, more credible. And um, I think people need to understand that. So, you know, we don't have to have these, you know, uh, insecurities about, you know, if our votes are going to be cast, if um, they're going to be counted, um, safeguards are already in place to make sure that that takes place. How else are you going to know the will of the people? unless you have a full count of the vote. That's right. And that's Absolutely. right. Okay. And, and it's just, it's so good to, that people who can't get out of their homes <clears throat> or leave their homes for whatever reason, that their voice still counts. And I think that's very important that everyone's voice should count. It, it does. Uh, and it is. And I think that, um, you know, we need to continue to make sure that we're exercising our voice because it's important in a democracy and that's the only way that you're really going to create public policy that is going to be in fact impactful to the citizenry. So, um, you know, these are the fundamental rudiments, you know, of, of our, of our society. And, you know, we need to uh, safeguard them because they're very precious, very delicate. Agreed. Well, Jacques, thank you. How much longer do you have down there tonight? Well, not much longer. We're just getting ready to uh, sign off, certify today's uh, ballots, and uh, send them to the town clerk so um, they can be counted on election day. Very nice. Well, Jacques, thank you for calling in, and I will see you on the show next Tuesday. <laughs> Thanks, Jacques. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> bye now. <laughs> <laughs> That was great. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Jacques, busy man, busy yeah. man the last mm -hmm. couple days. He said 800? Yes. 800 yesterday phenomenal. alone. That's phenomenal. So, that's yeah. I, I'm curious to know what numbers yeah. they had today. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So, Charlene, um, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to go back to our sponsors. Let's just mention our sponsors one more time, and then we're going to get back to your stories. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, our sponsors this evening have been the Toth Insurance Agency at 1151 East Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut. And if you need to reach them, it's 860-496-7771. Better protection, better value. Mel Brickman and Health Market Markets, 16 McDermott Avenue, Suite 1, Torrington. You better, better call, call Mel. Mel. 
<laughs> and you can reach Mel at 860-307-1128. The Chamber of Commerce at 59 Field Street, Suite 120 in Torrington. And you can reach the Chamber at 860-482-6586. The Chamber is the place to be. Dr. Michael Curry, 30 Peck Road, Suite 2105, Torrington, Connecticut. And that is pediatric care for over 50 years serving the community of Torrington. And you can reach Dr. Michael Curry at 860-482-8177. And we would also like to thank our T-Town shout-out sponsors, which are sponsored by the Torrington Downtown Partners, growing downtown Torrington one business at a time. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, Speaking of the chamber, they just honored Joanne Ryan. I saw uh, that. Two days ago, I believe. And um, I wanted to attend. I wish I had known in time. But um, it was an event called Celebrating the Most In influential women in Connecticut. And Joanne was one of the honorees along with, I believe there was one other honoree. Um, and out of the entire, out of Connecticut, um, there were only two people from the same town and that's here in Torrington. So it was Joanne Ryan. And also, hold on, I have to put my readers back on for this one. Um, <laughs> Good thing we have readers. <laughs> honestly. And I don't know if it's Lessa, L-E-S-A, or Lisa Venati, president of Torrington Savings Bank. Nice. Oh, wow. So Very congratulations nice. to Joanne and, and Lisa. I'm sorry Absolutely. if I mispronounce your name. But um, that was just um, amazing to know and to yeah. hear. Joanne has been oh, incredibly yes. influential. Um, I can remember Joanne being the head of the chamber. And, yeah. you know, you, it wasn't, you could call Joanne. Like, you didn't have to go through channels to do that right she has always been an advocate always in reachable. this town yeah always reachable someone who just knows everyone and cares for everyone and supports everyone yeah like oh, yeah. always and yeah. we, we're going back years and I, wow. I can remember her yeah being able to just like pick it up and say hey joanne and she and if she couldn't she didn't she would she would make sure she found out for you yeah so yeah and a huge shout out to joanne she was actually one of our board of regents for higher education up oh, until nice. earlier this year uh, so she's kind of been with us at CT State yeah. through the entire merger, and she's been really great, always an advocate for students, and especially our students at Northwestern, and getting them internships with the Chamber of Commerce, mm-hmm. and kind of doing anything she can. Uh, so she's been always a great, valuable resource for yes. the community. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out to and Joanne. And shout out to Torrington Savings Bank. Like, yes. You know, that is the bank. That is the hometown bank. Yes, it that's, is. That's it even is. beyond the hometown. It's like homegrown and, and beyond. <laughs> yep. So yep. shout out to Torrington Savings. There are so many people, in, including myself. I mean, we, we do a lot of work with them. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Very Always. nice. Very nice. So, yes, Charlene, back to you. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, your, your, your plays, the, you're an amazing playwright. You produce the, this um, International Playwright Playwrights Festival. Festival. Yeah. Um, tell us, if there was someone who, you know, wanted to audition for the Playwright Festival, how would they, how would they get the information necessary? So the Playwright Festival is set up to, uh, towards playwrights, so it's a, a call for scripts that goes out, and playwrights send scripts in. Um, so the call for scripts is on the Warner website. It also goes out through the Playwright Center, which is a wonderful organization out of Minneapolis that supports and advocates for playwrights. Um, and scripts come in from all over the world. They are uh, logged in by an assistant of, of mine, so they're what we call blind copy, so I don't know who, who submits them. Um, there are a lot of people that I encourage to submit because it's a great festival. Um, once they get through a first round of readers, uh, then the finalists come to myself and Sharon Hauk. Sharon is the producer of the festival. I'm the director of the festival. So we sort of split the duties in that I advance it all and get do the call for scripts, get the first round readers. Everything is is organized in that way. Once the final scripts, this year there were 10 plays, as you said, five per night. Um, Once those are selected, then Sharon takes over with her magic. Uh, She gets the directors, and the directors really uh, call out and and get the actors. So it's not a a, um, audition process in that respect. Most everything else at the Warner is, is an audition process, and they have just like all of the theaters around this area, you know, Goshen Players or, or Landmark or, mm-hmm. you know, any of the other ones that are out there, um, they do a, a casting call 
but in this case, uh, it's done a little different. So the, the, the casting call, if you will, is for the scripts. Mm -hmm. And um, okay. playwrights from all, I mean, we have, we have a huge, we always have a lot from Australia. We have a really? lot of Australian wow. playwrights who send it. Well, listen, you know, I look at Australia <laughs> and it's this vast <laughs> land, mass of land with, there's so much you can write about. I mean, oh, from yeah. the terrifying huge, terrifying huge spiders that can cover your oh, face gosh, no. to the, the I mean, no my spiders. brother has told me, you know, stories of the camel spiders. And, and then, oh, yeah. you know, you have the crocodiles. And then you have, like, you know, all these exotic, all these like, no. birds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Emus. And, I mean, there you go. Oh, oh yeah. The 23 nature. different poisonous things that can yeah. kill you if you step on them. Yes, yeah. Let's, mm -hmm, let's not. You know, and then, and, <laughs> then, and then they have this this great, um, uh, the Aborigines. Yeah. You know, I mean, Australia itself. Like, and there's just so much more undeveloped and untapped land in mm. Australia. I can see why there's just so much, like, your, your, you know, creative, you can just take a drive land. and, yeah, create it. Be inspired, it, like, yes. land, Be yeah. inspired to yeah. create. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that kind of well. makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had the very first year, so this was our 13th year. The very first year, um, one of our international playwrights, Gail Malloy, was from Australia. She'd never been to the United States. Um, and Gail made the trip for the festival, came to the Warner Theatre. Wow. From Australia, her first trip, she befriended one of the other playwrights from the festival who lived in Boston, and mm -hmm. she went with Robbie to her house and spent some time with Robbie up in Boston. So she got this whole tour because she submitted a play to wow. this wonderful little festival. So, and we, so, we yeah. have them from all over. And it brings people together. Look at look at it. The yeah. arts, once right? again. And yes. the arts, right? And and it's a community. You know, when you go backstage on our on both of our nights, like Sharon and I do the, you know, the rah-rah speech, like uh -huh. we're ready to go. People who haven't seen each other who in years, but this is a community. This whole yeah. area, this whole state, is a community of artists. And it's like, oh, I haven't seen you in three years. Oh, remember the last thing we worked on? Oh, you know, what are you doing? Oh, how's this person? How's your your kids? How old now? I mean, it's just it, it, it's a yeah. it's a community. It's it's a family. it really is a something about the arts. It, it you know, and I experience the same thing when I'm uh, I'm on set, and you know, sometimes. You know, I do a lot of the Hallmark Christmas movies, so sometimes there'll be another year before I see, I, I do another movie. And, you know, you get on set and everyone's like, oh my God, what was the last time you did? Oh, the last time I saw you. And then my son has done them with me oh, since nice. since he was four. And so now they see him and he's taller than me. And they're like, oh, that's not your son now. I remember when he did this one with us. And, you know, it's, it is really, yeah, it's, it's your family. community. Yeah, yeah. You know, you and, and know we, you, you develop your, your little community of, yeah. of people you haven't seen and even though you haven't seen them it's like really no time has passed by no yeah it's like yeah, yeah no time has passed by i think that's a it's that way in with a lot of theater it yeah, is it, it is. is and with the arts in general too you know i mean you, you go to something like you know a nutmeg ballet performance and you're seeing you're seeing artists there and dancers there that you might have seen for the past however many years and you see them grow. I mean, Victoria Mazzarelli was a oh dancer my there, goodness, yeah. right? She started, she had the, the gold medal in Russia and then yeah. now she's the artistic director. Like, wow, like that's a generational thing that just keeps going, which is wonderful. Amazing. Yeah, it's good. Amazing. Absolutely. So what's next for you? I, I think uh, we touched well, a little on that, but a couple tell us of some things. more. So we have... Um, on the, the national scale, my full-length play, 4 a.m. Friends, it's um, going to have the reading in Waterbury and the performance in Goshen. It is also uh, having a reading at Shelter Belt Theater in Omaha, Nebraska, with a hopeful production with them. Um, we've got a couple other production possibilities, Brownville Theater, um, Brownville Village Theater in Nebraska. Um, the University of Nebraska, Omaha, which is where I teach, I've taught there since 2011, the students are actually taking that play and, and they're doing a workshop production. And I've sort of said, take it and, and tear it apart if you want. I want mm -hmm. you, I want the students to be able to see what it's like to be in a room with a living playwright, but also to feel the freedom of saying, oh, this is speaking to me this way. Can we try this? Or can we flip the script? Or can we do, I, like, that is exciting yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing young minds, like, taking that, and uh, taking the arts and playing with it. Like, yeah. how do I play with this? So that's that's sort of the national thing that's coming up. And the local thing that we should talk about is Torrington Historical Society. Uh -huh. uh, this weekend, Friday night, rain day to Saturday night, they're doing their Center Cemetery tour 
Oh. So. Um, is it the cemetery that's right behind the Warner? It is the cemetery okay. that's right behind the Warner. Okay. That cemetery has a lot of history. It does have a lot of history. So yeah. Charlotte Hunkerford is buried there. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, Lyman Coe is buried there, Coe Park. There are a lot of Torontonians buried there. And when Torrington celebrated its 275th anniversary, the Historical Society reached out to me and said, we'd love you to write monologues that you consider that. <laughs> of course I would consider that. It was one of my most favorite projects I've, I'd ever done. And this was... 275 was... 10 years ago. years ago. Was it 10? I think well, it was it 10. that long? Yes, because Jacques, myself, and my son did a, one of the vignettes. We did played you do the, pr the, the princess? princess? Oh, my God! <laughs> Look, family! <laughs> right? Community, you played the princess! We played oh my the, and my son, he was four at the time. Oh, yep, my yep. God. Thanks to Sharon. Sharon contacted. It shows Sharon yeah. Houck with the Warner. Yeah. Oh, my. See, the things. It's community, people. Look, I twice we connected. That. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, they're taking some of those from the 275th. Okay. And some that they had written previous to that. And they ran them by me, the, the older ones, and said, you know, is there anything that, you, that, you know, we want to look at or change? And so if you go to this event... You will get a guided tour through the cemetery in Torrington, the Center Cemetery. You will meet uh, the the spirits of these people, and mm -hmm. they will give you some background, and you'll learn a little bit, and it's fun. Wow. Um, it's when a wonderful this? evening. So this Friday night, okay. if you go on the tutorial. Friday night. Yep, Friday yes. night. Rain date Saturday. Okay. So if you go on the, Is it supposed to rain? I hope not. I, I don't think not. it's supposed I to. to. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to. <laughs> I'm okay. tired of all that. I know. Yeah. But yeah, go on the rain, rain, but yes, <laughs> yeah, their website. The Historical Society website, and you'll be okay. able to get tickets. It's a, gr oh. it's a fun Halloween night. I definitely, night. to me, that's... You know, okay, back in the day when I was younger, you know, we had, we had did the clubbing, and, and as you get older, you want more, like, substance, you know, and to me, these, this is fun. It this, is. To me, this, this is fun. what has taken, things like this has taken place of, you know, my clubbing day. Um, but <laughs> oh, mine too. But that, I wait, would wait, I wonder love if there's pictures that. from the clubbing day. Oh, That's boy. what I want to know. <laughs> There's oh, no, wait, we destroyed evidence. all that evidence, didn't we? We yes. did, yes. Uh -huh. No, it never took place at all. <laughs> no, of course not. What stays, no. what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Like, exactly. never leave. We used to say that about New Orleans. I stole it. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> but, yeah, I would, I would definitely oh, go to this event. You, like, that yeah. would be my club it's night. Fun. And it's not like a haunted, you know, history tour. You're not right. going to get scared. You're going to go and have fun. It's good for all ages, you yeah. know. And yeah. Oh, so that would be so much fun. Local. What time does that start? I, you, there are different time slots. Oh, so if you okay. go Excellent. on the website, then uh -huh. I think it runs over like three hours, and, you, yeah. and it runs. You have to pick a time slot to, oh, to win. Oh, very nice. I'm excited. I, I, I'm. That is exciting. Yeah, I'm going again. I went last year. Yeah. And then what I'm hoping is that maybe next year we'll pick a couple other different Torontonians that are buried yeah. there and do oh, some new okay. ones, and we'll see. Yeah. That, awesome. that so. There you have it. Friday night, something to do mm -hmm. at the Historical Society. Okay, yes, um, absolutely. It's going to be a great event. It is. I'm yeah. excited for it. I yeah. really am. Yeah, they're great to work with, too. I love working with everybody. They right? are great to work with. And the Historical Society is an amazing place. Their courtyard is beautiful. Um, you can have events there. It's it's really, really mm -hmm. nice. The house yeah. is gorgeous. The courtyard is yeah. gorgeous. And it... The fact that it backs up to Center Cemetery, I just think is like the most wonderful thing in the world. I just walk around this beautiful old cemetery. Yeah. And in the very, very old section, if I remember correctly, they actually have images of the deceased like really? on the tombstones, oh, which wow. I always thought was fascinating. Yeah, it's 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 very cool. I love history and, and the way history and art intersects. Mm -hmm. um, my cousins from New York, uh, Brooklyn, I used to bring them up for, and they would spend summers with us and I would take them and drive them up to the John Brown oh, yes. you know um, just yes. empty lot yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> where, where the homestead was the, the... and they thought it was the scariest thing because there are no lights up there and they're no you know they're there. from city they're city kids they used the lights <laughs> everywhere and I would take them up and and I would say rumor has it it's haunted. <laughs> <laughs> and I would make them get, you have to get That's out the car weird. to experience it. Get you, out the get car out the and go. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Were so. you tempted to leave them? Tell me the truth. I, I was, yes. <laughs> I would lock the car doors. Yes, I was bad. I was a bad guy. <laughs> I played no. with their fears. I love, but you know, I love playing with their fears. And, and funny enough, Fabulous. though, true story. We got back oh, no. to my house later that night and... 
we're in the car and the car doors wouldn't open. <gasps> oh, my oh, gosh. See? John was like, don't you joke about these things. <laughs> the car doors wouldn't open. Oh, my god! We gosh, weren't even playing around and we're like, ah, why? We can't get out the car. What's going on? But, oh, my you know, gosh. Um, who knows? Who knows? Mm-hmm. Somebody, somebody decided knows? to come home with you and didn't have to open the door. Oh, but, yeah. you know, the history and art, <laughs> it's amazing. What I would like to see is... You know, I do, I walk the bike path a lot and I hear a lot about the um, Burville Cemetery mm-hmm. and there's a lot of history in there yeah. as well. Yeah, there is. Yeah, I would like for that to be explored more too. It's, there, there are, be- you know, we are in a, an area of the country where we are very blessed with some incredible old cemeteries and Washington, Connecticut used to do this. They're not doing it this year. They used to do the similar thing to what Torrington is doing and you know, walk around the cemetery at night by, you know, by candle, mm. lantern light. Mm-hmm. And I remember hearing people, about that, yeah. yeah. Portraying, and I, I did that for many years, too. I uh, went there. I didn't write those, but I went there. And it's, yeah, it, the cemeteries around here are phenomenal. I just, I did many, many years ago, I used to do elaborate Halloween parties, and one of them was cemetery haunts. So we mm-hmm. took the, the old cemeteries in Goshen, and the, the hunt for friends was to go in and find the oldest tombstones. But oh. to do that, we had to let the, the resident state trooper know that we were doing it, mm-hmm. give them the hours. We had to put, give letters to each of the, the budding homeowners so that they knew that it wasn't somebody they're vandalizing. Right. Like you want to be respectful. Right. And mm-hmm. then also being respectful of being in a cemetery at night. Like it wasn't somebody popping out and scaring people. It was sort of this historical haunt. You yeah. Know? So, oh, yeah. fun. Yeah. Halloween fun. time. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Well, well, Charlene, it has been a pleasure speaking with you Thank and you. I, honestly I think I'm definitely going to save your number because I think we can <laughs> brainstorm do. there's so much like we can oh my we'll gosh. have fun we'll have we'll fun have brainstorming fun. I, and coming I, up with different things I can't believe you played yeah. that I didn't know that's so great see this, yeah. is, this is what community is this is what we do we we and we bring together each other we bring together as a family as a community and we also look at how arts can enhance yeah our society and and show our society and be you know embrace that and change and change thoughtful thinking change with the arts love it love it love too. it thank you so yeah. much Charlene. thank you for having me it's yeah really great. i think what we're going to do right now we may have a segment queued up can we go to one of our segments all right I'm Pascal Nijame. And I'm Joe Severo. And today we'd like you to join us at Salt 2.0 in downtown Torrington. Conveniently located right next to the Warner Theater, Salt 2.0 is a great option on show nights. But honestly, Salt's an accessible and desirable option every day of the week. The restaurant's open from 11.30 to 8 o'clock Monday through Thursday and 11.30 to 9 o'clock on Fridays and Saturdays. The food service is quick and the options are both affordable and healthy. They fix grain bowls, wraps, burritos, salads, and my vegan friends tell me that the vegan burrito is to die for. Not to mention they have a finely curated lineup of international and regional draft beers and Bud Light too. (laughs) There's also a great wine selection and a full cocktail bar. The best part might be the seating. I love watching sidewalk traffic from the front section. The venue is both spacious and inviting. There's a ping pong table in the upper wing and tap TV interactive trivia at the bar. When you come to Salt, you choose the experience. Salt 2.0 was born out of necessity during the pandemic. The original Salt 2.0 was open in Litchfield. A dining room of the Saltwater Grill was cleverly converted into an offshoot to provide food for pickup. You can order online for pickup or you can order online to sit in, or you can request that a wait person take your order the old-fashioned way. For City Views, I'm Pascal Nee James. And I'm Joe Severo. Connecting you with Salt Salt 2.0. All right, I want to thank um, our, our field team there that was Joe and Pascal, and they presented on SALT 2.0. Excellent. So before we get into um, wrapping up with talking about our sponsors of the evening, I just want to give uh, some shout-outs to some of our Torrington businesses. Uh, Dawn's Getaway, located on 24 Winstead Road in Torrington. Christie's Restaurant at 545 Winstead Road, Torrington, Connecticut. 
Health Insurance Services at 438 Main Street, Torrington. Wall Wall and Fraunhofer <laughs> at 117 Main Street, Torrington. Seoul Latina Cafe, 31 Hungerford Street in Torrington. Definitely recommend it if you are ever hungry. Some great food there. Uh, Jimmy's Store at 1238 yeah. East Main Street, Torrington. Another great spot. Five Points Art Center at 855 University Drive in Torrington. Definitely always give that a shot since we were talking about art so much this yeah. evening. Yeah. George's Music, 905 New Harrington Road, Torrington. And now to our big shout-outs of our sponsors of the evening, uh, Toth Insurance Agency, 1151 East Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut. Better protection, better value. You can reach them at 860-496-7771. Mel Brickman and Health Markets at 16 McDermott Avenue, Suite 1, Torrington. You better call Mel. <laughs> oh, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can call Mel at yes. 860. I do call Mel. He's one of my insurance guys. He's fantastic. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> See? Yeah. Call Mel. Call Mel. 860-307-1128. The Chamber of Commerce at 59 Field Street in Torrington. The Chamber is the place to be at 860-482-6586. And lastly, Dr. Michael Curry at 30 Peck Road Suite 2105 Torrington. Pediatric care for over 50 years, and you can reach their office at 860-482-8177. And a T-Town shout-out to our sponsors by the Torrington Downtown Partners, growing downtown Torrington one, one business, business at a time. At a time. Absolutely. Very nice. Thank it's, you to our sponsors. Um, now, we do have an upcoming event, um, the James Baldwin Project, which is a documentary that's going to explore... Um, all about James Baldwin. Um, and that's going to be through Culture for Cause, and that's going to be presented at Five Points Art, Art Gallery, um, 855 University Drive. And that's going to be November 12th from Wonderful. 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. So Five Points is just, I mean, they have, they have become such a cornerstone of the arts in this yeah. area. Yes. And so I worked ten, at least 10 years ago when they were still on Water Street, mm -hmm. um, just on Water Street. Now they're up at the old right. UConn before University it, yeah. before they expanded. Yeah. Um, we did a, a Playwrights and Artists Festival. So Five Points provided three pieces of art. And we sent that out to writers and said, write towards this. Really? So, and, and they were great plays. And it's a wonderful way that you see, like, the different genres of art. Mm -hmm. You know, that's visual art coming together with the writing art. Wow. So that's yeah. another thing that, you know, wow. Five Points is great with that. Yeah. I love yeah. Oh, the James Baldwin thing. Sounds phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be, that's going to be great. great. Um, for tickets, you can definitely go to cultureforcause.org. And tickets are available online um, now. But it's, and the producers and directors of that um, documentary are going to be there. Fantastic. There's going to be a question and answer, um, a Q and A at the end as well. So you can definitely be able to speak with them and get their take on, on, you know, what led them to, to um, make this documentary. And give the, what's the date again? November 12th. Perfect. November I love 12th. that. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I love that five points has become such a fixture in our artistic community and, and just in the community in general. Oh yeah. It's great. And, and, and you can also um, rent out the facility. They have also another amazing courtyard. Yes. Have yes. you gone to that? Yes. Oh, it's the amazing. courtyard is beautiful. It's gorgeous. Beautiful courtyard. And this time of year up there yeah. is stunning because the, the trees, the leaves, everything, and the yeah. whole area up there is beautiful. Yeah. And, it was very sad, I think, in, in, in Torrington when you can't close that branch. I know. I went there. Yeah. I and went we were there. all like, what's going to happen to this? Mm -hmm. And, you know, Five Points really, really took over. I have to say, I, I, two, um, two professors that I think helped me hone and realize that I was meant to be in the arts. Professor John Long, mm -hmm. who taught um, theater. And so we had to come up with, like, sort of a farce on something we, on um, a play we, we've read. And so I took a streetcar named Desire <laughs> and I gathered three of my friends oh, and yes. And I decided to make this like over act just completely. Ooh. And so I played um, the Blanche. Uh, no. Stella. No. Um, the yes. guy. You, Stanley. I played Stanley. Ah. <laughs> I played Stanley. I love I going I opposite. There. I love going opposite from. I love it. Yeah, 
And so, um, and then, you know, the whole scene where Stella's dragged off, like... Um, where he's screaming her name? Yeah, no, where Blanche is dragged off yes, into the yes. bathroom. And so we left the stage and I had a box full of like pantyhose and different things and I'm throwing it on the stage. Like you went overboard and fought. Yeah. yeah. It's... Um, and John Long just, he, and then the other professor was um, Professor Verstandig. Um, she was um, a lit, lit professor. Okay. And so she made us memorize um, a soliloquy and she said, soliloquy so that's something always that's great to always go to a party and be able to say you know and mm-hmm. so I did um the Romeo and Ju- the Juliet Aww. soliloquy and then I also did she she wanted us to do a song and turn it into a poem like just read it like it was a poem mm-hmm. so I did um I did something from um Les Miserables oh nice um, yeah which was nice. amazing nice. and and it's funny because you sit there and you're like I can sing the entire song. I don't need to sit and memorize it to speak it, right? But then I get in there and I could not speak it. <laughs> I wanted to sing it. And, and you have to train your brain differently differently yes. to speak something that you know you can sing That's word for word. That's yeah, so it was just like... <gasps> But I look at you, you it. twisted that art, right? Yeah. You took one art and made it another art and, and they still work. Yeah. It's like that yeah. marriage. So Absolutely. that was great. That was great. Wonderful. Um, and I think we should maybe one more time before we close yes, out please. is point this out again. Last time. So no, this is November yeah. 2nd, Saturday, November 2nd at Dance and Beyond, which is located inside Pinewoods Racket Club, 104 Pinewood Street in Torrington. It's from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, you can visit uh, Dance and Beyond Facebook page for tickets okay. or call me. That's $20 per person. And my phone number is 860-655-6810. And that's November 2nd. It's going to be a great that's event. Fun. Create your own carnival headpieces. I have to call um, some girlfriends and some yeah. guys. Well, <laughs> yeah. Cause I, I think, yeah, we would all have a fun time. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it was absolutely. great. It was, I get the girls great. to bring the boys. Get, get the girls to bring the boys. There you go. That's always how it works, right? The boys will Absolutely. follow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll just log out. it out there. He, she, they will log it out there. Let's all everyone. Everyone. Yes. Everyone. Kids, Inclusive. everyone. Inclusive. Inclusive. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us here on CT Views because, you know, we changed our name. We're hoping to expand and cover more of Connecticut. I like it. Um, obviously, our Northwest Corner has some great things to cover, but we do want to cover more of Connecticut as well. So it's been changed to CT Views. So thank you everyone for joining us here tonight on CT Views. And we look forward to seeing you next Tuesday on CT Views. Yeah. Thank you for having Thanks, me. This is thank, you. thank you for joining us. Yeah, this was, this I, was I, a great it night. It was. And we I'm glad you came time. in person. I know. Originally, we were going to do phone, and, and you're so close to me. I'm like, well, yeah. why don't I just yeah. swing by? That was <laughs> great. Great. Thank you. Community. Again. Community. <laughs> Community TV for you. There, there you go. go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a good night. Serious, 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 serious,